Welcome to Techie Jack. In this video, we are going to learn some basic DNS concepts like what is DNS, why it is needed, how it works in local environment with AD and without AD, what is forward and reverse lookup zones. Without DNS, you cannot imagine the internet. Not only the internet, we can say the complete IT world. If you are an IT admin and want to enhance your IT career, you should know the concept of DNS as it is necessary and very important. If you are working with Active Directory, Web Servers, VPN, Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft 365, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and even migration to cloud is highly dependent on the DNS. You can imagine how important is it to understand the DNS properly. Let's see what is DNS. Basically, DNS stands for Domain Name System and DNS is a service that translates domain names into IP addresses. This allows users to access websites and applications using human readable names instead of IP addresses. If you try to ping a google.com from any computer which has internet, you will get the similar result. You will see the reply from and the IP address. As here we have 142.250.207.206. Every computer on the internet needs a unique IP address to communicate. Don't you think that would be difficult for anyone to remember IP addresses of a website instead of the name? As you know, there are millions of websites in the world. Instead of google.com, if I say you to open 142.250.207.206 and same way for Amazon, open 12.230.227.205. It would become a very difficult task to remember the website names. So DNS resolves this problem. And this is the overview of what is DNS and why it is needed. Let's see the real scenario of a local corporate environment. If you see this environment, this company TechyJack is not using any DNS server or service related to the DNS. They are using intranet where they have their CRM on 192.168.10.50, local website on 10.63, same way local email system on 10.69, attendance application on 10.72, sales portal on 20.38 and under development projects on 20.22. These are the IPs of these servers. Many employees are working here and they get confused with the IP address and it is hard to remember the particular IP address for specific service. Even if mixing these work computers with internet becomes challenging to open these application properly. Don't you feel that this kind of setup is incomplete and full of hazel that reduce the productivity of a business? Just simply imagine if there is a computer which remembers the name and IP for all these applications. These clients might request the name such as attendance to that computer and that computer replies IP of the application asked and clients open the application without any issue. Basically, this is what DNS server do. On the other hand, if we see the same scenario with the Active Directory integrated DNS, when you set up Active Directory domain services, DNS is automatically installed. You can say that it is an Active Directory integrated DNS. If we check our previous slide here, we do not have any Active Directory here. Therefore, the computers are connected in a workgroup. We can install and set up the DNS server in a workgroup environment as well. And that will be a simple DNS server without Active Directory. But now we have an integrated DNS with Active Directory. Now all the clients are joined with the Active Directory domain service that is ADDS. Now suppose if we have a CRM on 10.50, email on 10.69 and projects on 20.22. Now we can simply add these host A record entry in our DNS server such as crm.techyjack.local points to 192.168.10.50 and same way we will do it with the email and projects as well. Once you do it, now we can open these links like https.crm.techyjack.local, email.techyjack.local, 
projects.techijack.local. Now they are in a more organized way. Even if you are introducing any other new application and want a name for that, you can configure your DNS accordingly to achieve the required result. If we see this, this is what the exact host entry will look like in your DNS for your different services or application. You can see the forward lookup zone and the reverse lookup zone here. With forward lookup zone, you can configure the host A record and it translates the name into IP. For example, email.techijack.local will resolve to the IP 192.168.10.69. And the same way with reverse lookup zone, we have to set the PTR record that is called a pointer record, which translates the IP to name. If you run the nslookup command on IP 192.168.10.69, it will resolve to the name email.techijack.local. So this was the basic overview of DNS concept. Still there is lot to learn more about DNS. If you like this video and want to understand the DNS recursion and how it works in a public network environment, you can comment on this video to know more. If there will be a good number of people, definitely I will try to make videos on those topics as well. In our next video, we will try to configure the PTR record for our Active Directory DNS. I hope you found this video informative. Let's meet in a next video.